we welcome you back all the members after the delicious breakfast now we'll be having the second inning and that to na same topic bank branch audit only the difference is in a first sessions sandeep sir enlighten us on the lfar now in the second session we invited ca pankaj tiwari ji pankaj bhai thank you very much for accepting our invitation and your valuable time the topic allotted to the second speaker it is on the iric norms and the practical aspects of the bank branch audit so we welcome you sir with a round of applause now to formally introduce our second speaker i would like to invite our past convener c r bajaj ji he will formally introduce the second speaker good morning everyone thank you jayesh bhai and jv nagar ca study circle for giving me this opportunity ca pankaj tiwari he is with cnk and associates llp he is qualified as a chartered accountant in may 2012 having experience of more than 10 years currently involved in the audit and assurance services along with consultancy services like due diligence valuation etc previously worked with bsr and company llp in the financial services segment handles audit under various gap indias ifrs etc of various listed companies specialization in audit of banks nbfc hfc hfc and many listed companies he is member of asb study group of guidance note on bank audits expert panel of asb on bank audit he has contrib contributed in various publication issued by wirc such as statutory audit of bank branches background paper on concurrent audit of bank branches he is regular speaker on indias at various forums in india and overseas also regular speaker on companies act and other topic on account of on account of bcas sirc and wirc with these few words i present before you on behalf of jv nagar ca study circle ca pankaj tiwari on the topic irac norms 2.0 practical issues please welcome him with loud applause and i invite jayesh bhai shah to present memento to him towards our love and affection good morning everyone say loudly good morning when the topic is such you have to be little attentive it's an iric norm and uh, <clears throat> wherever i have spoken yesterday we were at indore there was a whole session on the bank branch audit this was the most important topic which was sought by the audience <clears throat> 
and when they approach me or when the jb nagar or any other branch approach me to speak on this topic of iraq norm i was wondering what to what should i speak so there is no change right how many of you are you know done the branch audit in the last year just raise your hands right A good number of people so when i was wondering that what i'm going to speak on because there is no change in the iraq norm there is no change in 90 dpd still remains the same no change in the provision nothing coming new what should we speak on then then i looked up my last one year doing a bank audit a private bank we saw the issues which were highlighted by us which were highlighted by the other auditors and when i started putting those issues let me tell you i have curtailed it down in iraq itself i have not included some issues from the in the presentation there are many many changes it's not important whether there is a change in the current year it's important whether we have understood the change which was there in the previous year we might have reported in the lfar as a clean in a positive affirmation but have we tested them have we looked up them carefully analyzed it and this i am saying only and only because the reduction in percentage of advances of a branch audit is not a one day decision it's a thoughtful decision by the rbi we were on the panel with a certain banker on 18th march at wirc some points were highlighted by them which may be true may not be true but this was highlighted by them that auditor change ho jata hai observation last year ke hi rehte lfar mein the copy paste model which is there i rec 2.0 i have written it 2.0 only because it is a 2.0 people who have read 2015 i rec norm will understand the changes what is there in this i rec norm there were three to four changes in last year if you look at it or i i can start from 2021 in 2021 the rbi started coming up with new format of the lfar they come up with the new format of the lfar Not many new things were included. Not many, oh, what do you say? Uh, updated things were included. Like, for example, what Sandeep was discussing in the morning. Earlier, you were only supposed to look at whether the stock audit report had been opaque or not. Now it says that whether the stock audit report has been opaque, and also the negative observation in that has been looked up at the branch. So that is an extension. So if you look at the whole LFR, it was like. Updation of certain clauses, inclusion of certain new clauses, and enhanced reporting of certain additional clauses. These were the three segments. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Last year, all of you who raised the hands audited the branches. That was the year when the IRF norm got changed, and it was changed. You will understand how it was changed. People who are familiar will understand the implication. Third point: expectation of regulator. In the morning, Sandeep mentioned about the Center of Audit Quality has issued their Excel utility, the beautiful utility, and I would request the convener to download that utility and circulate in the group which has not been done. Let me tell you, my friend, uh, many seniors are here; they will realize that first April twenty twenty five is the year when the firms. For the practicing chartered accountants who are doing the bank branch audit, will be subjected to peer review for April twenty twenty five. Whenever this kind of peer review happens, they look at the files of previous three years minimum, but they have to give a certificate as a peer review. Twenty to twenty three is the first year which will get picked up for getting the certificate which is applicable for first April twenty twenty. Right. And you know, after you sign the branch, the branch manager doesn't recognize you also on the list. It's better to keep all those documents, information, etc., around the building. And that was one of the reasons why the CAQ came up with this idea. There has to be a standardization in the document, and it's a beautiful utility. I prefer it to get circulated. And you can look at yesterday on Center of Audit Quality. There was a demo which was done, done also. 
you can look at that uh, video itself. It's a it's an important one. Coming to the topic, I had two uh, points in my mind when I was preparing this presentation. You know, just to give you a thirty thousand feet overview, what is IIT norm? You know, what is nineteen days between out of order? Is a computer or so on and so forth. Or the second aspect which was there, let's get to the circular, even if we look at five to six key points. Only. And I'm only and only gonna speak on five to six key points which are there in the presentation. I will not be discussing the whole IRF now. I will not be discussing the whole IRF now. So I had two things in my mind when I was preparing for this presentation. Or let's get to the circular, let's understand seven to eight key points, which will either directly flow to your NFR or will directly flow to your MOC. They will not go anywhere. And those are the points which have to be done for today's discussion. So some non-regulatory development which is there, which is nothing but like the important one to focus upon is this. RBI is focused on asset quality. Yesterday there was a meeting with the public sector bank with the finance ministry. This is one of the points which has been again emphasized obviously because since last 10 to 15 days, the focus has been come back again on the banks. <laughs> and when the focus shift on the banks automatically shift from the auditors of the bank. <laughs> so, it's an important one we need to look at it in the current year. This is all you are aware about it. I'm just repeating it. The percentage of advances have been reduced from 80% to 70%. From 23 24, it is given up to the banks to decide what is the coverage of the advances they want to cover for the audit program. And this, this comes with the precondition. This comes with the condition that they will look at their centralized system. They will look at that what are the documents which have been digitized at their place. You can't just take an arbitrary view that I will reduce to 50%. So, obviously, from banks to banks, it will differ. From the banks to bank, it will differ. And it might not remain at 70%. Some banks will continue at 70%. Some banks will come down. Like, for example, Bank of India has not reduced its coverage of advances at 95%. Only. It is still at 95%. They have not reduced the number of banks. And that is the PD was also present in the WIC panel discussion. And he again reaffirmed that Bank of India will not reduce the percentage of advances, it will still continue at 95%. However, every bank might have different approach to it. This is I'm just giving other point, which is the important changes branches perform. Obviously, the as you are aware, the branches form perform has been reduced till now. You see roughly which was there earlier. So this time many people might get chance, but that may get negated. By reduction in the percentage of advance. Because 80%, you know, higher number of branches were there, 70% the number of branches might be. Any idea how many, what will be the percentage, or what will be the number of size of the branches which would be getting audited across all 12, 12 public sector banks? Any rough numbers, any estimate? Anybody? No, I'm asking number of banks. Four, four on banking. Well, four weeks are not estimated. Three hundred. Four on banking. All twelve public banks put together. <laughs> How many? Less than twenty. It's around forty-six thousand in twenty twenty-one. In 2022, we audited as a whole branch auditor around 33,000 branches. It was reduced from 46,000 to 33,000 only because of this reason. 80% to 70%. This implication will come in the current year also and going ahead also. Direct 2.2. Let's understand which are the areas which are untapped. Or which are the areas which, as an auditor, we might not be aware, or we might have tested but not documented. All people who raise their hands that they have done the audit in last year, I would just want to ask a question. 
what was the biggest change in the last year in Ireland? A simple question. Then I will get on the topic. What was the biggest change in the Ireland? Due to COVID, there was a lot of COVID restructuring circulars are there. 1.0, 2.0, MSME 1.0, 2.0, and I said 2.0. August 6, 2020 circular, two circulars issued that time. And then in 2021, also they issued a circular. Anybody else? Any other change? I like it. What was the change last year? There were two circulars which were issued. And that's why I said I'll get on the circular too. There were two circulars which were issued November 2021 and Feb 2022. These all were implemented in the last year. Sorry. It is other than restructuring. Restructuring those four circulars for application. That was the change in the LFR. Wherein all the auditors, you know, very much the RPMs to write a letter to them. Clarifying that please say why you have not downgraded this account. They always used to reply that this drone was never part of the sample. That's what RPA introduced. Now you give the list of the sample in the LFP which you awarded. And we'll ask you a question from there. I read two points the change was an additional to circular, November 2021 circular, and Feb 2022 circular. What was the change? There were two changes. One, the date of NPA was changed. Then, Method of determining the date of NPA was changed. Second, out of order criteria was changed. The biggest impact was there because of out of order criteria, change in the out of order criteria. And we will spend good amount of time on understanding what was the change. The other point which is there, first, so our first discussion point will be on ILAC 2.0. What is the change? The second is COVID 2.0 restructuring package or COVID restructuring package in general. If you go to any branch today, some or the other branches will have a pool of restructured portfolio. Agreed? It will be either an MSME restructured account or it will be a normal restructure. One of the contentions of the RBI is that today's auditor or even the branch auditors In a manner in which it should have been looked at. And it's an evident because if you look at the reason for divergent, everybody divergent, divergent is that what auditor has certified and what RBI is coming out with the APM is coming from the restructured account. And as an auditor for us to understand that what are the typical points I need to look at it when I'm looking at a restructured account. They are different. They are not the same. After 90 days, the NPA Valega, which the date of NPA 91st is there. It is not the case in case of restructured account. In certain restructured account, the date of NPA goes back to the date of implementation of restructured. We have to be careful because it can't be done through system. It cannot be done through system. And if it is done through system, well and good. But are we checking it? And are we opining on it? That's the second point which we will deal with. The other is monitoring pool of restructured account. All of you are aware, upgradation of accounts. When the whole recovery is done, the accounts get upgraded. Am I clear? This is not the case in case of restructured. Again, you have a different condition for upgradation. That means any upgradation of the current year, which is coming from the pool of restructured account, has to be treated differently as compared to your normal upgradation. It is not the case which is there in case of normal. The last point, retail loan portfolio. All of you are aware there is a five or six rate hikes of happening in the interest rate of the advances on the retail loan. Reports. What are the issues as a monitor I need to see in those kind of cases and whether there is a potential NPA return, which we as an auditor need to look at. Might classify, might not classify. But as an auditor, I should be aware about that implication. The last point is on the certificates, etc., which I'll discuss, mainly relevant for the SCA. Uh, all of us might be issuing the certificates. Certificates are issued with a limited assurance or with a reasonable assurance. Everybody? Correct? Till today, has anybody asked you to give the reason for limited assurance? 
No. Nobody has asked us to give the reason for limited assessment because it's completely about the auditor's professional judgment that what kind of certificate I should pay, issue it, depending upon the audit procedure. And the RBI circular, this is the extract of the circular. It says that SPS or SS shall indicate in every certificate as to whether the same has been issued with a limited assurance. In case of a limited assurance, the SC or SS shall indicate the reason for it. It cannot be at a branch level because these certificates are normally issued by the central title, but they rely upon the certificate which is given by the branch auditor. So your certificates might undergo a change, not necessarily the central stack auditor are okay. This is the one change which is creating such a hurdle amongst all the central stack auditors. Because if you look at the guidance note, there is no direction to say that where to give the reason for limited assurance. Should I include in my other matter paragraph? Should I include in my opinion paragraph? Or should I put it in my auditor's responsibility paragraph? <laughs> anyway, that is the central order or direct to name it. Before we get on the bank branch audit anytime, we need to identify two to three things. One, what are the critical issues which are there in a bank audit which I need to focus upon? Because I think somebody sir, was mentioning that within five days, six days, how can you expect a branch auditor to know the whole branch and report upon? This is the issue which everybody is facing it, right? Fine. 10 critical areas on which I should be focusing on. And on those 10 critical areas, I should be checking that what are the recent regulatory development which has happened and whether the bank has implemented those regulatory developments. That should be my first job because let me tell you, 80% of the things remain the same in every bank branch. Every, or if you look at the public sector bank, even after merger, most of the situation remains the same, and there are still funny. So that's a question what kind of situations to arrive over. First, I need to identify one of the typical issues which I need to look at in the branch call. Then it is slow issue. And as we have discussed, COVID 2.0 implementation, restructured account, downgrade, upgrade, how they have been upgraded, and for the retail loan portfolio. Before that, we also need to look at what are the regulatory developments which have happened. And for that, we need to go through the RBI circulars. Am I right? I'm asking Pankaj, you know, every day RBI comes out with something new. I mean, as a branch auditor, what do you expect me to read all the circulars and be, be, be prepared for it? No. That is not the expected. There are some key circulars which will have great impact on your audit. And what are the key circulars we should be aware about? The first circular is this master circular on prudential law. There was a circular of 2015, which was an NPA. Everybody, circular got changed in 2021. They came out with a new circular. First April 2022, it's consolidated circular. So this is a circular which, as an auditor in the current year, one has to refer on NPA law. And we will discuss some part of that circular. Of the banker also, and later when the branch auditor approaches us, they approach us with something which has been changed years ago. Because what are you referring? You are referring to old circulars, or you are referring to old direction, which have been replaced or repealed by the user bank of India. That's why it is important for us to first look at it. What is the circulars which I need to look at? So first being the consolidated circular on prudential law. Rest are normal. And I think some of them Sunday night discussed in the morning. This RMP and need otherwise was discussed in the morning. Master direction on priority se sector certificate. This you need to see if you are issuing a certificate on the PSL. All of you issue a certificate on the PSL, right? That the priority sector has been categorized correctly and it is validated properly. This is a circular which you need to refer. The next circular which one has to refer is this. I think Sunday was mentioning this circular also. The consolidated circular opening of current account and CCOD account post April, which was issued in April 2022. This circular is consolidating all the information because this discipline started in 2020. People who might be tracking would be knowing. This came in 2020. So there are many circulars which are issued subsequently. You need to read the circular and you'll ask me that why this circular is important. Just hold for some time. This is the most 
optical circular to be read in the current years of it. And I tell you why. Another third circular which one has to refer is automation circular. People who have looked at it in the current year, last year's uh, NFA would have given positive. Anybody has given a negative automation in NFA? In your, any of your branches? Everything is correct subject to this MOC, right? That's a normal thing. Everything is fine or yes, all okay except this MOC which I'm issuing. You need to look at it. Anybody is aware? What, what do you mean by automation of energy? What do you mean by automation of energy? System A. System A. को identify. NPA के चार पार्ट होते हैं. एक होता है NPA को tag कर. क्योंकि ये account default है. दूसरा होता है वो account कौन से category में जाए? It is not necessary all account to standard है. Right? Second, what is the account? Which category? In which account? In which category it will be? Third is how much of the interest reversal has to happen on that? The fourth is how much is the provisioning need to be done on that? The concept of automation is not that only NPA tagging has to be done. And why I am telling you this? All the public sector bank has created a myth that they have automated the interest. What have they automated? They have just automated the identification. They have not automated the interest version. Some have automated, some have not automated. And you will see how they have automated. So, whenever you are writing in your LFR, I mean, I have been telling this, we have been implementing it wherever we do the branch audit, or we do the central audit, and we have been doing, we have been telling the others also. Wherever you are writing that the NP automation has been done, we need to be very clear. Have we tested these things? That interest reversal has happened to system, provisioning has happened to system, upgradation and downgradation has happened to system, and your classification has happened. If these things have not happened, it is not. It is. It is not that the automation has been done. So be very careful whenever you are writing in the automation. And the reason. The reason is very simple. RBI considers the statutory branch auditor or the central site auditor as the first external party to report on the practices implemented by the bank. And if we are reporting that yes, the branch has or the bank has implemented the MP automation, we are conforming to their wrong rule. It is better to report that this NPA. Automation has been done only up to the classification and not up to the interest reversal or not up to the classification or provisioning. Very simple, you ask me, once I always tell me, it looks okay, but how do I check it? Right? At the end of the day, when the file comes to me, how do I check it? Simple example. Basic security valuation. If the valuation report is more than three years old, what should happen in the system? What should happen in the system? The system should consider the value at zero. If your NPA report is considering the value at zero, that means the NPA has been automated. If your report is considering the value which is there in the valuation report, the system has not been. Because as per the logic, all things should be automated. Classification, provisioning, so on and so forth. So, this is a third circular which one has to look at it very carefully in the current year. These are some, all of you are aware about it guidance note, technical guide of LFAR, and ISCFR. These all are institute publication, and many a times we get lot many queries on LFAR. How should I report like this? How should I write like this? This, this technical guide on LFA has been prepared completely from practical aspect. Anytime if you face any challenge in this uh, reporting on the LFA, first you should refer this document. Because it has been prepared to help the members and how to report under different situations. I know this guidance for this to work. And we have tried to cut it down as much as possible. But still, if we cut it down, it will lose its relevance. So that's why we are not we have restricted it to whatever it is.
let's come to the changes now. Changes. So, this circular 14 September 2020 circular automation of NPA, FY21 22, first October IRAC norm, and then there were two circulars which were issued on 12 November 2021 and 15 February 2020. This all has been consolidated in this first April 2022 circular, which is called as the IRAC 2.0, and which we have just discussed in the morning just now. The change which was there. This circular came first, basically, the IRAC 1st October 2021. What was the change? By the way, this circular has been replaced. The change was that this. Have you heard any time that the provision has been made on non fund based advances? Any time? Provision on non fund based advances. So, always the provision was done on fund based advances. Because still the time being, Non fund based advance does not get converted into fund based, we don't make a provision. <laughs> so, the exception which was made by the RBI may not come at the branch level because these are a top accounts where a resolution plan has been done as the 17 2019 circular. But this concept is there that you have to make a provision on fund based plus non fund based advance. Coming to the first circular which was issued on 12 November 2021. There were five to six key points which were there. We will be discussing only two points from the circle. And my sincere request to each one of you who will be doing the audit in the current year, if we have not tested this logic in the last year, let's do it in the current year. Let's do it in the current year. The first change which was done by the RPI in November 2020-21 circular was the date of old watching. The date of over the watching, you might have heard bankers arguing that if the demand has been made on the first day, the borrower has a time limit in 30th of the month to pay the deal, right? Branches might be arguing, banks might be arguing, and if it doesn't pay on 31st or 30th of the month, then the account becomes an over, right? That was the whole debate which was going on in the market. The RBI first came and told them, to all the bankers that please specify the due date of the loan in the loan agreement itself. The first line which is mentioned here. Sure. That please specify the due date. That means when the demand is going to be becoming due. If it is becoming due on first, then the overdue is the next day, typically. If you say the due date is 30th, I will consider the 30th. Whatever is there, please mention in your loan agreement itself. Let's look at the chain. This is the chain. Earlier, the due date was 31st March 2020. The overdue date was first April. Everybody, next day it used to become overdue. The SMA reporting used to start from 1st April 2022. And NDA used to happen on 30th April 2020. Everybody, any issue with the next? No, it was very simple. What was the chain? The change was the due date was 31st March 2022. The overdue date becomes the same thing. That means if you are not paid up to 11.59 pm, the account will be treated as an overdue. And then the SMA will start from the same day, the entry will be one day before. This was the logic which was changed in last year. Last year, this NPA date was performed by one day. It is not important that the NPA date is shifting by one day. What was important that many of the banks were running this NPA on a monthly basis. Many, many banks. Quarterly basis, some banks. Six monthly basis, some banks still running. Not a single commercial bank. The first change they got is that this NPA has to be done on a daily basis. And this is not the requirement of today. This was the requirement of 2011. As an auditor, it is our responsibility to see that whether the NPA has run on a daily basis or still the NPA is running on a monthly, quarterly, or whatever frequency they were trying to do. Because as for the circular, this is the circular of 2020. As for the circular, SMA as well as NPA shall be part of the end process for the relevant date. Have we tested it? Have we, we have reported 
Many of the branch auditors have reported that this has been done and done. But many public sector banks have not done it till now. They are still running an NPA only for the month of March. They start running NPA on a daily basis. But still, they run NPA on a monthly basis. So, first point for us to okay, what do you mean by daily process? Somebody has asked me on the conference. Pankaj, when you say what do you mean by daily process? You know, we know EOTA happens with the grant, right? End of the day. Is it the daily process? Can you call it as a daily process? The daily process is very simple. You have this source system, Pinnacle, correct? Many banks use the Pinnacle, many banks use some different system also. You could have your NPA tagging module either here or in some independent system also, right? You could have an NPA system which is completely clean system. This is Pinnacle. At the end of the day, this is different as compared to your EOD. On 1159, till the time you are supposed to repay this. This this on 11:59 of 31st March. If you have not paid the money, I mean, what will happen? Customer database type of facility position of demand will recover. That means the demand was made on 31st March, but it has not been paid. All this data will move to the NPA system on T plus one day. That means today I am running. Today is 26 March. Today's data will move to the NPA system on T plus one day. That means on the next day. And on the next day, what it will do? What the NPA system should ID do? Should ID classify the asset into substandard output or loss as we have discussed? Provisioning should be done, interest reversal should be done, and upgradation should be done. And this NPA system will send a reverse feed. What do you mean by reverse feed? If you go to the pinnacle, you will see NC01, NC02. The health port which is tagged in the pinnacle that comes from here. If they are using an independent system, that has to happen on a daily basis. That's the function how how is the auditor actually right? Because when we go to the plants, we have just given the NPA report of 31st March 2020 three in the current. Every bank has a report which is called daily NPA edition report. Every bank. If they are saying that the NPA has run on a daily basis, they will have this report which is called daily NPA edition report. Whenever you are sending the initial requirement list to the branches, include this in your requirement list. You don't have to struggle later on. Just ask them any random five sample dates daily NPA edition report. That's it. If it is not there, that means the NPA has not run on daily. The entry has run only on monthly basis and give five to six random dates across the month. For January, ka do, for February, ka do, for your first quarter. Ka do. They give every random date and you will come to know. This is the first change, by the way, my friends, which was supposed to be tested in the last place. Changing from 91st day to 90th day. Or in other words, go blindly right in LFA. One point, which is, and many banks are not implementing. Many, many are not implementing. Sundays, holiday, are not an exception in the daily and in any uh, running of the system. That means, if today the cutoff date has happened and tomorrow is a holiday, the NPA system has to run on the holiday also. There is no exception in the circular that it should not run on holiday. 99.99% banks in India are running this on T plus 2 or T plus 3. That means next day of the holiday. Is there anything wrong? No. Why? Because the NPA will be tagged on the same day. Either you run on T plus 1, T plus 2, T plus 3. But is it a non compliance with the circular? Answer is yes. It is wrong? No. But it is non compliance with the circular. And I will report it. And as a branch auditor, I have reported in all the branches which I audited in last year. Yes. You are talking about the outcome for the criteria.
Pay for one minute. The next topic is that only. What you are discussing about 90 days debits and 90 days credits, right? That's what we are discussing. That criteria is applicable only for CCOD facilities. It is not applicable for term loan facilities. What are there is a two different definitions of an LPA by the way. One runs on 90 days GPD, which is completely on term loan. Another runs on out of order criteria, which is applicable on cash credit. What you are saying, 90 days debits and 90 days credits are applicable for out of order criteria, which is for CCOD, and we are discussing it. So the first point to note in the current years, same day what's the next day, take five samples, not more than that. Just take five samples, identify the date of NPA, pre-compute the date of it. Has it happened on 90th day or has it happened on 91st day? Or it, all the banks in India today have issued a document which is called Consumer Education Literature Material on NPA. As per RBI, the last point here. Okay, I mean, can you see this 30? Yeah. Last year, there was supposed to be issue of consumer education. That means many consumers are arguing that bank may have told us that our own NPA company. So what they said, you issue a guidelines in public domain and it will it is available on all banks. It's a beautiful document. What it gives you, it gives you that when the account will get classified as an NPA. Along with this kind of an example, along with this kind of an example, each bank has issued a consumer education literature material. What we can do, we can pick up that consumer education literature material. See that how the bank have told that they are classifying as an FTA and look at whether it's system it is happening that day or not. If it's not happening, it's a serious issue then. Because you are telling one thing to the public and you are doing exactly the other thing in the system. So that is also one thing which one can check. Consumer education material on MPA. It's there on every bank's website. Pick up five samples for the current year. Test this logic at least for three days. And document because if it is not being done, please raise it in your LMR because it's a serious issue. I tell you, my friend, 2011 also the intention of the RBI was the NPA should run on a daily basis. And they had a huge issue with the branch auditors that none of them reported that it was not done. And when the auditor was questioned, they said RBI took a cut out. But as an auditor, are they reporting the first thing? Because if we are the first one to report, then the RBI comes up and reviews it. So please look at this concept whether it has been implemented in the current year or Now coming to the Adam's point on CCOD. Everybody CCOD three criteria. So first thing we saw in area 2.0 same day version. Same day version. Next thing. That's a criteria. Now we are coming to the second important change into the plan, which was supposed to be tested in the last year on changing out of order criteria. Till last time or till 2021, CCOD accounts were classified in NPA as for the bank's issue. Every bank had a different method to classify accounts in the NPA. And the reason was that there was some ambiguity in the circle. Like, for example, if you look at it, what was the argument? By the bank, many banks were doing it on a quarterly basis. NPAs were in CCOD accounts were identified on a quarterly basis. What was the reason? The reason was this. First was very simple, right? What was the first condition? That the outstanding balance in CCOD account remains back in the excess of sanction. Very simple. It's with the issue in one. If it is more than drawing power, you are NPA. 90 days to In cases, let's look at the track change. Outstanding balance in CCOD account, principal operating account leave it, is less than the financial limit of drawing power, but there are no credit continuously for 90 days. As on, as on balance sheet day, that they have removed. This was the condition why the banks were classifying the accounts on a quarterly basis. They were saying for us the balance sheet date means what? The balance sheet date means the quarterly date. Because as to the saving requirement, I'm supposed to 
issue the audit uh, unaudited or review financial statement of quarterly. So I will look it in a quarterly. This was the meaning of that has been removed now. In CCOD account also, now the NPAs are identified on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And how they will be identified on a daily basis, we'll look at the example. The outstanding balance, the third condition is where the change is. The outstanding balance in PCOD account is less than the sanction limit. That means you have not come in the first condition, you have not come in the second condition also. But the credits are not enough to cover the interest debited during the previous 90 days. That means you have got the credits, but those credits are so less that you are not able to survive your interest demand also. That means what? That means your business is weak or you are diluting the fund. And that's why the NPF, the account should be classified as a NP. This has created a walk. If you would have tested it last year, you would have realized. Look at this account. I mean, look at this example. What the RBI has done. Minimize who are you? Excuse me. Minimize who are you? Minimize who are you? Minimize who are you? Because you can't just see this. Because you could not see the example. See what has happened here. I am running an MP on 31st October to take this example very carefully. I am running an NPO on 31st October 2022. I have to do what? I am testing only third condition. Assuming that all conditions are satisfied because they are very simple conditions. I am running an NPO on 31st October 2022. It doesn't mean that NPO is run on one theta by the way. Don't assume that I have taken an example of 31st October means it has to be run on 31st October. It runs on a daily basis. Previous 90 days debits, interest debit 36, everybody. How it came? 11 plus 12 plus 13. Everybody? Very clear? Previous 90 day credits 36. How come 36? October. The previous 90 day will start from 2nd August. Am I correct? I have to know previous 90 day. So the previous 90 day will start from 2nd August and from 2nd August you have got credits. 13 plus 7 plus 12. That's how the account will be standard on 31st. October. Everyone, here the account will become NPA on first moment. Because it has to run on daily basis. The account will turn on NPA on first moment. Can somebody tell me why? The account is running NPA on turning NPA on first of November. Anyone? 13 rupees credit. 13 rupees credit. Excluded. Why? Because now the 90th day will start from third order and not from second order. This is the issue with daily NPA definitely. Because you are all aware. An account is get classified as NPA. What happens to the linked accounts? All get classified as NPA. Now look at the pattern of this account. What will happen if there is a credit on 2nd November? What will happen if there is a credit on 2nd November? Again, you will do 90 days debit, 90 days credit, and the account could be upgraded also. So that means the account get downgraded on one day, account get upgraded on the next day. And it has a serious implication because you can't upgrade the account if there is a OOD in the other account. Even though the CPOD might get, they might be eligible to get upgraded, but will not get upgraded. Why? Because there is a other account where there is OOD. If you would have analyzed it last year, you would have observed that there are many CCOD accounts which are getting classified as NPA and are getting upgraded. So my second request to all of you is that we spoke about five samples. The three samples you will do for the same day versus the next day classification. We will do two samples at least to test whether this logic is running effectively or not. You will ask me that company, how should I you know, look at this? Pick up two accounts which have been classified as NPA in the current year. And look at this, whether the 90 days debits and credits were sufficient, and if they were sufficient, the account was not classified as an NPA, and when they became insufficient, the account got classified. 
it's a very important logic to test in the system. And from, I spoke about the consumer education literature material. This is also included. So if the banks have reported that they are doing the CCOD account also on a daily basis, then I think it should be there in the system. Do you think it's a logical? Do you think it's a logical? I think you have to take it up here. No, no, it's not. It's also interest only. So, if you're doing this, I just want to ask the question. Yeah, supposing only interest was there, actually, it's not going to be on the study for this activity. So, very true. What sir is saying? Sir is saying, what is the default? The default is only one day, 13 rupees. The default is not on 90, 90 days. The default is only of one day. He has not serviced the interest only for one month. And this is the debate which is going on with IBIO. He, you are giving this logic. By this logic, if I implement the account, it can implement it. Because you were saying previous 90 days debit, interest debit should be there to make enough credit should be there. That is why many banks have implemented this logic, which sir is trying to say. Many banks, many banks have implemented, and it is important for us to know what is the logic is implemented at my bank. And from where I will get consumer education literature material. Because the branch manager will be as ignorant as you want. Even if it's available. The second way which has been implemented, which sir was trying to hint is that what the banks have done, 31st July, let's suppose the interest got debited. Okay, 50. What will happen in that system? It will compute DPD one. That means it has become over default one day. On 1st August, it will become DPD two. On 2nd August, it will be, there is a credit and the DPD has become zero. The account will not get classified in it. If it reaches 90 days. This is one view which has been taken by the bank. Largely, the banks have implemented this view. Both the logics are existing in the system. We were waiting actually for the RBI to clarify on this matter that whether one view one should be followed or view two should be followed. They yeah, have done the inspection of both the banks without any light and without any comment. As a responsibility, as an auditor, what is my responsibility? Simple. What the bank has disclosed in the public domain, are they doing on a daily basis or they are following the liquidity logic? Whether the same has been implemented in the system. As an auditor, I should be looking at that only, nothing other. So, out of five samples, please look at the samples. Three for same day versus next day and two for the daily liquidity computation. Or any classification of an account. Sir raised the point, I think, on the credits which comes in the system. I'll give you one example. Forget about the auditors, even the bankers are not intentionally or unintentionally. Look at this example. You are aware now current account should be closed. There is only one account, which is CCOD account. You can have only CCOD account with the bank. Take an example if the borrower has to. Is first or term for project problems. When I have to make a payment to the third party, the bank has to directly make a payment to the third party. What will be the general accounting interest? TL will get debited, cash credit will get created, then what will happen? Cash credit will get debited and party will get credit or there will be a transfer. Any errors can you see in this? Any issue you can see in this example? Right. That means what? In our example, the 30 rupees which you are taking as a credit could be a TL credit also. Could be a TL credit also. And I believe this should get excluded from your out of order criteria. Because the bank cannot fund its own account. 
and Tom becomes a repayment by the board. Why is this new relation? None of the branch can have been complicated. Because today, in all the banking system, all the RTGs are done through operative account. You cannot use office accounts to the extent I am aware. Because RBI restricts the use of office account for transferring the funds. Everyone is using this. And by the way, they are not only violating this, they are violating another circular of RBI, which says, and that's why I was saying this consolidated circular of opening of current account, which says that the bank should not loot the drawer term limit to CCOD or current account of the borrower. Since the term loan are meant for specific purposes, the fund should be remitted directly to the supplier. If your bank is putting this here this person and the branch manager will give you this on a platter. If you ask him how many TL or project loan you have this person, he'll be very happy if you call business other than audit. He will tell you, yes, I have disbursed in five, ten cases. Look at those examples where the disbursement has gone. And 99.99 percent the disbursement could have come to the cash rate account. And if it has come to the cash rate account, he violated. Two things. Yeah. And in unintentionally, he yeah, violated the out of order criteria. So, when Sarva is saying, and this becomes very important that what is the quality of credit which is coming in the situation? As an auditor, are we looking at it or are we not looking at it? We are looking at it since very long. And there has been always a debate, right? Whenever you will tell him that, okay, this credit has come, but it has gone the same way only. This is not a correct credit. This is not a genuine credit. He will have a 10 arguments to give you. Either way, he is having a business relationship. If there was a loan, it will give you later also. That there was a loan taken and there was a loan reflected also on the same day. But these kind of issues you can't argue. Because these are typically the issues which is of non compliance And intentional or unintentional banks are doing this. So as an auditor, we also need to move upward to our quality of observation. And if you put these kind of observation in your LFAR, which even the bankers would not be aware, because nobody has tested these things, and it is getting considered the credit, forget about the public sector bank, half of the foreign banks would not be aware about it. So this is the first important point with which we are looking at the quality of credit. I'll move to the next one. Uh, this would be a very simple one for all of you. 30th August, 30th September, there was an interest debit. On 17th October, there was a credit which came. 31st October, 30th November, 31st December. All interest got debited, no credits. And I'm suddenly on night, and I'm telling, I'm giving all this to a financial screenshot because these are not hypothetical data. This is financial screenshot. It is the content of the borrower. On 9th January, there is a 100 rupees credit which has come. Can you tell me why you will deposit this 100 rupees by cash? Yes, just deposited 100 rupees by cash. So, credit is now come. Reason being, it is processing 90 days. It is crossing 90 days. If you look at the 17th October, and he has done very smartly, he has not done on 15th or 16th. He has done on, I think this account should be classified as an entry on 15th or 15th, because that's where the 90 days expire. But he has not done it. He has done it on 9th January, so that nobody can catch. Because you will typically look what? You will typically look at the credit which have happened during the back end of the NBA classification. As an exercise, you can take it and answer so many of you or many of the branch auditors do it All cash deposit in the loan account below 1000 rupees. All cash deposits in the loan account below 1000 rupees. And you can get this from your cash book easily available with the branch manager. Whether he gives you or not, that's a different story. But it is available in the system and that's how this has been identified. Look at that and look at the cases which are there in the SME 2 also. SME 2, everybody, which is between 60 to 90. 
all those accounts wherever there is a thousand rupees less credit, less than thousand rupees, and the account which are running into XML account, XML report account, you will get these kind of things. The practices are still remain the same. What was there earlier? See, this was two to three things which I wanted to talk on November 2021 circular. It was supposed to be the last year, by right? And only of you would have been a positive confirmation in the LFI that has been implemented correctly. Nothing is wrong. No issues are there. The other circular which came is 15 February 2022 circular. Okay. Is anybody having doubt on this example? Then, Pankaj, you are running the entry on 31st October, right? Why are you taking 30, 30 rupees of the interest every ID the circular since previous 90 days, right? So, ID what you should be doing? You should be starting it from 30th October. Why are you starting from 31st October? Anybody has this kind of a doubt? Then, why this 30 rupees should get included? The, the circular say previous 90 days, right? So, from 31st October, previous 90 days will start from 30th, 30th October. It should not start from 31st October. Many banks had this kind of an issue. And RBI understood. And RBI said, previous 90 days period, inclusive of the day for which the day end process is being planned. That means it will include that day also. To that extent, RBI has won this time. Let's look at the other example. And, and these are the typical examples which will have either implemented or not known to the banks. There could be only two situations. Look at this example. What is this example? Basically, there is Mr. A who has three loans, personal housing and auto loans. Now, these, these are outstanding. What is the status on 29 November? You had 30 days DPD, you had 90 days DPD, you had 10 DPD. Now, this housing loan should become an NPA. All three should become an NPA. Madam is very clear, all three should become an NPA. Why? Because you will tag the SIP ID of the borrower as an NPA or customer ID of the borrower as an NPA. The moment you tag customer ID of the borrower as an NPA, all facilities under that becomes a NPA. On 11th March, this is the status. What he did, he came back and he repaid the housing loan. So the housing loan becomes net repay. However, there is an overdue in this account and in this account. The bank have upgraded. On the bank on 11th March has upgraded the housing loan from NPA to standard. And all other accounts are standard. Because what is the view of the branch manager? Which account was an NPA housing loan? I have done net repay. Is it correct or incorrect? Correct. How many are correct? Sorry, sir. NBA, it's not an NPA, by the way. These are all below 90 days. They all are below 90 days. Yes, sir. Only interest? Or EMI, basically. Right? That means what? It should all be become. Are you all trying to say that all should become net equity? Not necessary. What till what should I drop it down? Both are 90 days below. So the branch's argument is that this housing loan have done net equity. All these are below 90. So all accounts are below 90. So all accounts will get upgraded. Yeah, because the, one of them, because one was at NPA, all were at NPA, all need to get out of overview. All need to get out of overview. So, sir, the point is that all things should become till the end. Are you saying that? Or is anybody there who will argue that no? What was the account which became an NPA? Account which became an NPA, how can you? The branch has to do the recovery in which account? The branch has to do the recovery. Auto and personal became an entity because the housing went into the entity. On standalone, they were never an entity, right? They were never an entity on standalone basis because if you look at auto loan was net equity and on 29 November, personal loan was 30 equity. They became an entity because housing loan became an entity. So I just need to do the recovery in housing loan. Why should I do the recovery in the auto and personal loan? And both of them are pure 90 days. 
Anybody can do logic? Anyone? This was the logic which was sold to the auditors till today. Till today it was sold. Till last year. If you go and look your file of the last year, you have this logic. There would be overdue in the other accounts of the borrower, but the primary account we got upgraded would be having their duty. Otherwise, there was no reason. And why it was happening, I'll tell you the reason also. And how we go in the current year and check also, some banks are still continuing the same. Forget about the public sector bank. The foreign banks are the private bank are doing. What is the issue? And this is an important area which, as an auditor, I should be highlighting it in my editor. What was the issue and why the branches were or bank were taking that view? Look at this wording of the circular. If the arrears of principal, interest and principal are paid by the borrower in case of loan accounts classified as an MPA, the account should no longer be treated as non-performing and may be classified as an MPA. They were reading is that this circular does not talk about link account. Guidance on the link account. The guidance is only on the account which is classified as an MPA. What it says, you do a recovery. Once you remove the tag of an NPA from the SIP ID, automatically other two accounts get updated. That is where the RBA bought this tag. And that's why this requires insertion in the circular. In case of a borrower having more than one credit facility from a bank, the loan account shall be upgraded from NPA to standard only upon prepayment of arrears of interest and principal pertaining to all credit. So in this our example, the bank is wrong. We are seeing this here. If you get on the ground, it is still happening the same way. It has not been improved. So the system is not capable to capture this kind of an improvement. So today, whenever you are looking at the branches, look at the accounts which have got updated. And you can easily, people are, you know, you will have young people in your team. They will understand. What you do? You go buy them on the whole loan book. Trust ID wise, how many loan accounts? Right? In the last few years, NPL. Let's suppose you got an account which was there, one trust ID, three account. In our example. This trust ID will have three accounts in, in, in that uh, trust ID, three accounts will be linked. Okay. the current year. And SMA reports which are generated are generated on a daily basis. The day on 11th March, when the account got upgraded, I will look at the SMA report of that board. Whether in SMA report, all these accounts were having zero DVD or Basically, the question comes is that how should I check it? Because on 31st March, I can't go back and check those accounts. Because there may be a recovery in those accounts. And the overdue will be of today's date and not on the date when the account got updated. Because this is a daily upgradation and daily downgradation. Look at those SMA report of those accounts which are there in the trust ID. If the SMA report is having zero degree, that means the recovery has been made on that day also, you will be easily able to verify. But 95% cases, there would be an issue. And you would be having these accounts getting upgraded with these kind of things. So, this is the other point, my friends, which I wanted to tell you all. Same day versus next day, out of order classification. Out of order classification also, you look at it whether it is running on a daily basis or not running on a daily basis. What is the quality of credit which is coming? Link it with the example of a term loan reimbursement. Because there is a non compliance And the third is the linked accounts classification. These are the points which I wanted to discuss with you. And I like to point out whether I just completed the first part of my presentation, which is I like 2.0. The changes which were there in the last year, I have not discussed any changes of current year because there is no change. But these are the issues which we should be looking at in the current year. From IREC 2.0. We discuss about this compliance of April 22 March Federation. We discuss on the reporting on different practices which is followed. CTOD daily basis on 90 days, what I was saying that it should start from DVD 1 from the day the interest got debited or it should be on a daily basis. 
Link account classification we just discussed. Manual intervention. Many a times, you know, you will have, by the way, the automation, once the automation has been implemented, there has to be limited manual intervention. That means what? There has to be limited MOCs for reversal of interest. I think speaking after automation, you should not have any MOC. You should not have any MOC in the branches for FBA classification. Unless you find this kind of an image. I mean, this kind of an image, which is not been automated. Or you find the MOC where the security valuation is wrong. Three years have expired, but the people have considered the security value. Otherwise, there has to be minimum manual intervention. If you are finding 10 MOC of interest reversal by yourself and giving an affirmation that the NP has been automated itself to the contract. So, my simple submission to all of you is that if you have any issues in the IIT, because it's a very, very critical point at the branch, you might report it for stopping you. Bring it in the main report. Audit report. Why? Because I tell you practically how it happened. Practically, the LFAR is not signed on the same day the day the balance sheet gets signed. LFAR gets signed, the time limit is 30 days. Any times your observation, which is there in the IRAC, which is there relating to the IRAC, would not get noticed by the zonal office. By the but if you put it in the main report, See, branch manager does not understand the difference between emphasis on matter paragraph and other matter paragraph. I can write in any other in any paragraph and I can communicate to the central side auditor because the reports are issued to whom? If you read the issue to the central side auditor only. So I can communicate this IRAC related matter in my main report, even though I have recorded my LMA around it. It will get picked up very quickly from there. Because whatever may happen. All the statutory auditor has to go through the report of the branch auditor. It is not only by their code of ethics, etc., but by the standard of SS 600 to which they rely on. So, simple is that if you find any, any observation in any of these matters, report it in the LFAR, but bring it in the main report. Here, these are the clauses in the LFAR where you need to report, and this is the most important clause. See here to computer system without manual intervention. And this is the most important clause whether the RBI guidelines on income recognition and provisioning has been followed. So look at these clauses very carefully before you write a positive affirmation. Two to three issues go to discuss and we all will be a different issue because I am not discussing the routine issue. I'll come directly on that issue. Over. Anybody has any hint on this matter? This is a burning issue in the banking industry. Yeah, please. Yes. 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 See, uh, after 2020, I believe the interchangeability is not allowed. That means you can't have the facilities sublimit from a working capital facility what you're giving a NFP limit. NFP limit has to be sanctioned separately. And I think there's a that whether such kind of interchangeability has been allowed by the bank. If, if it is allowed, we need to report it. If, we, if it is allowed. Classification of cohort. Anybody has any clue on this matter? Typical husband wife no. So let's first understand how the code, and let me tell you, this is again an MOC, which will directly come in the bank, because no bank has implemented Like the data. Let's understand the co borrower issue. What is the co borrower issue? You have two people, husband, wife, father and son, could be any relationship. Could be two different parties also, right? Two partners going and taking a loan also, right? What happens? Both the people's income get assessed every day. Both the people's income get assessed, the loan eligibility gets determined, and the loans are disbursed. The difference is one person's photo comes on the left side, another comes on the right side. But both are the signatory to the loan agreement. Both are responsible for the loan repayment. Am I correct? There could be situation 
where only one person income has been considered. But then again, the second person has been taken to made as a co board because many a time bankers insist on adding one more person in your loan account because they feel that okay, this guy will have to do it. This is different from a guarantor, huh, by the way, because the guarantor are never part of the loan application. Guarantors are taken separately. So, what is the situation here? You have two people who have taken a loan. A plus B, both the people's income might have been considered or the loan might not have been considered. That both are responsible to pay the EMIs. Still okay? Yes. Do you agree that both of them are defaulted if the account goes to the NPA? Yes. Do you agree that both the accounts should be classified as an NPA? Once it gets classified as an NPA. If housing loan, example, if housing loan, there is a primary borrower and co borrower. If the housing loan becomes an NPA and if it is under joint loan, do you agree that primary and co borrower both should become NPA? Yes or no? What do you mean by making both as an NPA? Simple, my facility will not become an NPA. I think that is both the same idea for plus idea and the Right? Theoretically, very good. Practically, none of the public sector bank in it. Forget about public sector bank. Public sector plus foreign plus half of the private sector are not doing this. Nobody is doing what, what are they doing? They are only doing because for them, both are defaulters. They will just report it to the civil. They are not tagging these accounts as an NPA in the system. That means what in my example, housing loan will get tagged as an NPA, and what will get tagged as an NPA? The SIP ID of the primary borrower. Because SIP ID of the primary and co borrower could be different, are different because they are separate borrower in the banking industry. Because the primary has become an NPA and it has the auto loan, the auto loan becomes an NPA. But the auto be tagged to the SIP ID of the Primary and credit card, okay. You will say credit card branch for the required asking. Okay, change into personal loan. Whether the personal loan of co borrower should yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. 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 now it should be check. Or if you have any friend of a branch manager, ask him. None of the bank does it. Practically, what happens? Practically, the SIP ID of the primary borrower only get cashed by doing the NPA adjustment. The SIP ID of the co borrower does not get captured by doing the NPA adjustment. But that is not how the system has been designed to us. Do you agree? I reckon something if this should be an NPA. I don't know. We read so much about I like no. There was a bank, but it is a different world. So you are saying both the borrowers have equal jointly and severally liable to repay the loan amount, and they have equal responsibility to repay the loan amount, and then they should be classified. You know, classified. Somebody mentioned that the term borrower includes co That is what the RBI said. So this was the issue in the one of our bank, and SSM, the manager who does the support, discussed with them. We said that why don't you all come out with a clarification? You come out with clarification for all small small matters. Why don't you come out with clarification and say that all co of the service? He said, where we are written that you should not be done. We have not written anywhere that it should not be classified in this paper. The whole factory industry is not classified in the company. Yes. It's very simple. Customer ID. Somebody said that customer ID of the money. Yeah. We believe different. 
Sir, question is that HDFC has given a loan and the loan disbursement. I, I assume that it's a one day loan, they don't need to go to the bank or whatever. Otherwise, if you go to the seller or to the vendor. And the loan amount has come to who? The loan amount has come to the primary borrower. Sir. And the primary borrower is repaying the home loan or mortgage loan from his own account. Sir, so question is that how do you make co borrower as a responsible? Because co borrower is never the case. So, should we classify this account as an NP? Right? You're saying that if primary borrower has defaulted, who has taken the loan, who has taken the money, and he himself is paying the loan on Monday with the loan ticket and pay for Exactly the point. You answered your question by yourself. If you are a signatory to the agreement, legally, legally you are bound to repay the loan. Tomorrow, if the primary borrower does not repay the loan, you are caught by the banker to repay the loan. What has happened, you know, public sector bank, without understanding the credits, they have made guarantors as a co borrower Actually speaking, in your example, the second party should have been a guarantor and not a co -borne. That's why we have, and this is what, you know, as an as a advisor to our clients also, we should be telling them. Please stay away from becoming a co -borne. As far as possible, become a guarantor. Otherwise, you will have these kind of implications. Getting yourself caught in the wrong code and getting classified as anything. Look at this example, my friend. It's a very, very important issue. The branch and its companies. If the co borrower is having an account, the branch of the same branch. It's a different branch. See, for example, I am auditing. Having an account is the same as the same as the same as the same as the my responsibility is limited to the MPA of Asian other branch. Absolutely. And so, will there be any reporting responsibility since it's having a limited Akinata branch and he is a co borrower to the main borrower's account? Absolutely. Because it's connected to your limitations. The account which is mapped to the sole IP only get appeared that sole IP through the non PFC accounts with the other branch. That is what your limitations are about. Simple, then it is not good. But yes, if you have come to know that this borrower has a limit with another plan, ideally, as an auditor, I should be highlighting to the second auditor if I can highlight it, or I should highlight it in my area that this borrower has an under facility with some other grant, the account should be classified as the respective grant. My point is that. Let's start classifying the borrower which is at my branch. 
because many a times the relationship is 95 percent are restricted to one branch. And this is your point that the response the relationship could be with multiple branches also. But take largely the, uh, the relationship is that the one branch. If you have a relationship with the one branch, it's classified that around four cellulite. And then like go to the other cases which are the relationship with the other branches or the branches which is not in Bombay also. You can have a limit to any one. But my simple humble request to all of you is that take up this issue. Pick up this issue. This is an issue. The branch manager will ask you three questions. And we in our bank and we have successfully implemented in our bank. He will say, I like to call it that answer you have. <laughs> I like does not require. Kaun karta hai or kaise karna? Correct. These are the three typical questions he'll ask the answer. I have, I have clearly told you all there is no specific guidance, but both are jointly responsible to retail the facility. The term borrower, somebody said, in IREC would mean to include co-borrowers. And both the borrowers should be classified. And these are the two banks which have implemented this logic in today's scenario. And this is available in public domain. I am not naming something very private. The consumer education literature material which I told you, if you download of those two banks, they are very clearly written. If a loan account of a borrower is classified as an NPA, all other accounts of the same borrower or co-borrower also classified as an NPA, irrespective of the old status in the other account. Both these banks are classified in the account. They are not following the different direct norms. They are following the same direct norm what public sector banks are following. As an auditor, I want to highlight this side of the issue to the Reserve Bank of India or even to the Central Saturday Order. This is what the quality they are expecting. They are not us now expecting that you say that how many accounts the DP has been computed incorrectly. Of course, that is an expectation. But those are traditional issues. I call them as a traditional issue. These are non traditional issues. These are like a issues which are. Known to everybody, but nobody wants to build the gap. Let's look at the example. And you all have to answer me now. I will explain you all who are going to say over A and B are the primary and co applicant. Am I right? They have a housing loan which has become an NPA. Now you have to play Sudo. A has become an NPA. So his housing loan become an NPA. His autonomy will become an NPA, no other facility. What should I do with the B? What should I do with the B? Now it should get classified as an NPA. Today, these accounts are not classified as an NPA. What is classified as an NPA is only this account. This account was there in the picture. So, I need what should happen. We should get classified in NPA. When I say classified in NPA, it should get tagged as a NPA. That is what I'm talking about. Then what will happen is credit card will become an NPA, even though not my responsibility. What should I do with the C? What is role? C has an auto loan along with A. And A has been classified as an NPA. As we implemented, this is the area they ask us, and this is the issue which we face practically. What should I do with the C? Raise your hand. How many of you say Banaru Siko be NP? Logically, also it should go right. This should not happen to half of the branch of the city. What should I do to see? Give me the answer. Yes, right. Let's classify some of the right words. What should I do to see? Give me the answer. No, yes. No, yes. Yes. How many of you say yes? Classify the account. And how many of you say no? No, don't classify the account. Okay. So why you should classify the because the loan account itself gets tagged or the loan gets tagged in the next case. So automatically, would the dividing three gets 
which will have a domino effect on the person who has got it. Yeah, obviously, all C will become all this. Sir, you also know what to say because that's not a family. So, getting because of some uh, somewhere else. You are saying that uh, why you make C as an APM? Because C I was not again responsible. If C has not departed with respect to auto loan, the auto loan has not become an APM. It's not signing the of the So, why do you make C as an APM? Right? Current year, let me be as an APM. I will give you the answer of C also. And Banks have implemented different factors. Out of those two banks, one has classified in the one has not classified. The topic is that, and the argument which is given by the bank is very simple. Okay, why do you want to classify C as an And tell you, sir, auto loan will not get tagged as an The SIP ID of the A is getting tagged as an To understand, the facility does not get tagged as an The borrowers get tagged as an so, in this case, what I will do, I will tag A C by D as an NPI and still make a auto loan provision. To understand, I will still classify the auto loan as an NPI by making SIP ID of A as an NPI, but I will not make these account as an NPI, personal mortgage loan of the C element, because C was not having any problem. If I start doing it, I will be facing a legal consequence to the court. Saying that, what was the responsibility of C? I was signatory to an agreement of an auto loan. So, auto loan has never departed. Be nice to the civil. How can you classify an account as an NPA when in civil there is no default? And then I should be classified as an NPA. So, that's why many banks have taken this view to be C should not be classified as an NPA. Deep with go. Obviously, far better, right? So, for current year, I would request you look at this issue. Classify at least B as an NPA. And this cannot be argued on IREC norm basis by the man. Because he himself will have a document of sanction later. He himself will have a document of the loan agreement. He himself would have issued a notice to both of for repaying this issue. So let's look at this as an example and do it in the current year. One important point, ECLGS economies. Not many ECLGS are really classified as NPA because the world of the game is NPA. And you all know very well, better than me, what are the issues of ECLGS? The issue which we are looking at the banks and which we have observed in the banks is that the recovery which is coming from these guaranteed companies. Earlier, CPKMC guarantee used to come from the CPKMC recovery used to come. The ECF just recovery when it is coming from the central government or the guarantee company. Some banks unintentional because the systems is not trained that way, is they will consider as a recovery from borrowing. Because where I will credit them, I will credit the loan amount of the policy. So, like for example. If you look here, and this is again a before financial screenshot. If you look at this example on 6 November 20, December 2022, there is a ECLGS recovery which has come of 11 lakh 92. The loan account balance opening was 60 lakh 41, which has come down to 4 lakh 51. This recovery, my friend, should not be considered for the purpose of NPA of Because this is not the recovery from the borrower. This is the recovery which has been done from the guarantee company. And why, how I will take in the pinnacle? Simple, right? If the ACL gets loan, but if you have statement in one or two cases, so some have to take this care, right? One or two cases, look at it, what has happened in that ACL. Whether those have been upgraded, not upgraded, you are very fortunate. Your bank is excellent. If they have been upgraded, they should again be done. Because, and, and in pinnacle, you have this menu. Where you can put just CGKMC account details, wherein you have to write whether this is recovery from various schemes of central government or state government. If you tag there, then the system should not idly catch it while doing a here. So, what is the point? Covering in ECLGS scheme 
from the guarantee company cannot be considered as a recovery from the borrower should still remain as a entity. Very interesting. Again, a new concept negative amortization. Anybody heard of it? Anybody? And this is all happening practically on the ground in banking. You had a housing loan. Okay. After six rate hikes, the rate of interest has gone up. Right. But many banks have chosen not to change. Why? Because the moment they change their EMI, you have this inflation on a high, and you have this EMI increase, the probability of default is very high. So what they have done, they have kept the EMI constant and they have increased the tenure of the And somebody at one of the conferences will ask me, can the bank do it? If the bank can do it. Because if you go and read the fine print of the agreement, the bank has kept that option in themselves. That either I have increased the tenure or I have increased the tenure. So in this example, the bank has not increased the EMI and it has kept the EMI constant. By that, what are, and by the way, you know, if you have these kind of cases where tenure has not increased, and the banks with clear already they have raised them a big issue because some of the loans are going maturity after 60 years. How can you have those kind of loans? Which is maturing than your repayment is going after 60 years. The whole cumulative principle only will get not get recovered. Somebody was telling me, you know, when we raise this point, all right, one thing we do, we will uh, recover his employee benefit and all, we'll take in some promissory note and all. I said, do you understand what will be the accumulated outstanding at that point of time? Have you evaluated whether it is sufficient from an employee benefit which you will get? And what do you think that you can get employee, entire employee benefit, EF and all, to recover the housing loan? So let's be very practical. So the first issue is that they're increasing the tenure. The issue for us, to look at it that this was an opening balance level at the interest got debited to 10,000. It should be level at 10,000. There is a recovery which has come of 9,500. What has happened? The 500 rupees interest is not getting service. Right? Everybody forget about the principle. Forget about the principle because I think both the recovery should happen. Or interest and principal, that means EMI should get recovered. Second year, second month also the same thing has happened, 9,800 and 9,500. Again, what do you mean by negative amortization? Negative. The start balance and the end balance should get on the reducing side. However, the start balance and the end balance is going on the upper end. That means this is getting amortized in a reverse state. Will I classify things as normal name? More than 90 days, Will the system classify the accountability? Will the system classify the accountability? Anyone? Yeah, the number of Bank gifts? Number of Okay. So, what's your interest in there? What's your interest in there? So I should not classify the accountability since there is a partial recovery. Anybody else? Anyone? So anyone who is saying the account should be classified in the let's hear them. Who says the account should be classified? More than 90 days, even though I have lower parts. The partial thing also, unless that the partial thing doesn't for us. So partial recovery. Is happening only of interest. I think he was supposed to pay principal also, which he has not paid entirely. Will the system classify this? Anybody who is saying the account is not a classified Yes, sir. So there can be some more That is different. Interest. Then I will call it as a level. I mean, I can have a different terminology for it because you are giving a top of it. It will depend upon whether the property value is so much to give the top of the And if I give a clear to recover this one, that means again I'm going to be able to move on that part. Now, let's take into the facts of the case. 
Okay. 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 If you have any friends in NDFC and all, or in banks, I'll be question. Can still learn anything? I have worked so many years. Absolutely. In NDFC, this kind of situation happened, and the banks are more better than NDFC. <laughs> If the bank has not done that, I mean, it would prefer when they like once it is declared as LPA that the borrower has to pay it or he can tell the bank that okay, EMI should be paid or no, you increase the EMI, I think you have to service the EMI. If you are not able to service the EMI, it's automatic. Process ID. In my example, sir, after directly, it has not worked. But if it crosses IQ, it has to be classified. First slide. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to just go back. I just want to cover one point. I think I've covered one little let me see. So can you all just repeat whatever we said just now? What are the important points? I'll go to the last slide of the presentation. So I think I've covered it. Ah, before that, okay, yeah, this is what I would do. See, we discussed about restructuring and all that, right? In case of restructuring, please remember this very carefully. Restructured accounts, other than personal loans, COVID 112, 6, August 6, 2020. Other than personal loans, if the account is getting classified as NPA, Classification post implementation of IP restructuring plan. The NPA will be earlier of date of implementation of IP or NPA date before implementation of IP. It will not be the 90th DPD. It will not get classified on the 90th day. The NPA date has to go backward. It will go back to the date when the account was restructured or there was a possibility that even if the account Upgrade it on restructuring. So, NPA date before that. Please look at this very carefully. In the simple point is a restructured account as a separate task. Because you have many implications related to this application. That is one point. I think I'll go to the last. Yes. Don't do anything in the branch. Cover these points. The graduate don't think it's better. Yeah. NPA in NPA. We have discussed linked account operation. This slide will come to you. Don't take picture. Don't worry about the picture. Linked account operation, we discussed. What are the examples? Quality of credit we discussed, which is what? Quality of credit example. Peer credits. Down loan credits which were coming in the account. Possible ever greening, which we discussed with Sergey B. Example that I will show here to close the recovery. Form over substance, if your bank is running an NP on a fan basis, then you are saved. If your bank is running an NP on a side basis, then there is a whole issue which is going on, double consent. So that should also be included in analysis. I think that's a legacy issue. I'm not discussing that. Form over classification, we discussed in detail. Security, existence, and valuation for provision purpose. We discussed more than three years should become zero in the system. Downgrade of restructured account. We discussed that it should go back later. Revised TMI of negative amortization. We discussed. Recovery and upgradation of BCL GSP. Discussed. These are the issues that you can just look at. And let me tell you, these are all non credit stories. These might have tested it, might not have tested it in earlier time. But these are some very critical and important points which as a branch auditor we should be looking when they are looking at NP. This is okay, do the bank audits. I think you people are much aware about it. This is the area of coverage which I was talking in the beginning. We had around 46,000 branches. We got reduced to 33,000 in the last year. It might get further reduced in the current year also. As I was saying, BOI has remained constant. In fact, I don't think the number of branches is Anybody from India? <laughs> I will be 
I'm finding that person. How can they survive at 78 percent when the minimum requirement was 80? And this is from the published annual account. For all of you, take screenshot of this and photos of this. And if you get an answer, please email it to my email. I'm still not able to find the answer. You have a cash credit account which is running into credit balance. Okay, I know. Or overflow account. And 31st March, there is a debit which has come. Where you have made payment to some party. Should I classify that account as an NPA because there is no credit since 90 years? On 31st March, the account was never debit earlier. Should I classify that account as an NPA? If there was a credit balance, it would have classified deposit. No question about classification of an NPA. This account has come into debit only because of one debit on 31st March. Should I classify this account as an NPA since there is no credit on NPA? Not asking the answer now. Think about it and send me the answer. The second NPA case, security valuation report has expired. The value will become zero if you are buying an implemented automation correctly. Whether such account should be classified as a loss. Because the value of security is less than 10% of the outstanding value. And I erosion on the criteria I recommend. Should I classify that account as a last as a loss as a so once you classify account as a loss as it, it can't be upgraded interchangeably. I can't say no because that loss last year it is doubtful now because my security has come. It cannot be the case. So, should I classify that as a loss as a NPA, as a loss asset? And post 31st March, the valuation report is obtained and the value is probably the loan. These are the two questions which I am still not able to find the answer. If you can find it, send it to my email. That's what I'm saying. Do you accept it? Accept the valuation report post 31st March for a value which has to be inserted as on 31st. Whether the valuation is accepted, again, I will repeat my question. The value of market is the valuation report as on 28th time also. So if the valuation report is coming post 31st March, should I accept it while considering the NPA provision? What you will do if an account which was not an NPA on 31st March and the account becomes an NPA on 2nd year? So the moment you can say, no, it's going to be NPA for the register group, the branch manager will say, okay, I'll get it done within a day. Can you, can, can you make an adjustment for that? It's a non-existing event. If you look from AS4 perspective also, sir, it's a non-existing event. Why? Because the initiation of valuation has started post continuous month. But if the initiation started and you have got the valuation, you would have updated the valuation. What you will do for post balance sheet return? Are you updating the amount of post balance sheet return? Worry about the balance sheet. It's not This is where the RBI catches us. The simple point is the NPA has to be reported on a daily basis. The account which is an NPA on 31st March, I'm accounting for it on 31st March. If I extend the bank logic that I will get the valuation report on 4th April or 6th April, why should I not take those accounts which have been classified as NPA from 1st April to 6th April? I don't think it was one. If you want to take the benefit from this side, you should be ready to bear the burden from the other side also. And this is what I've been, RBI has been telling on poor balance sheet paper. Please don't accept it. Let it go to the central statutory auditor. If he wants to upgrade it, let him upgrade it. He will never upgrade. So poor balance sheet date recoveries, please don't entertain an answer because you don't know what that is, right? You might be doing it, somebody might not be doing it. And then he will say that, okay, this branch is upgraded. Try to get it. 
these were few points on trends which I thought I would cover as part of the IIT now. Nothing to do with 90 days, really. nothing to do with that how we value your security sector. Thank you so much for your patient training and your wonderful insights. Akkaji, just for my knowledge, what is the uh, position of the guarantor if there is a security line behind the loan and if there is no security means? What uh, one guarantor is there? And another one, personal loan has taken and guarantor is also there. So, can the bank recover from the guarantor or what is the? See, the, the flow of recovery goes like this. As per the law, also that the bank is supposed to dispose of the secured assets against which the loan has been given. If the bank has not been able to successfully dispose of, either not because the property is not marketed, but because of that bank internal lapse, they can't go to the guarantor. Anytime if there is any guarantor who has been approached by the bank, the first right of recovery is on the security against which the bank has funded them. If they have not been able to recover, then it falls on the bank. Yeah. Till then, it doesn't fall on the bank. And where they use security means personal loan is there. And then the character is Character personally is responsible. Yeah. That's the logical guarantee, right? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's an exception. I think uh, it's it there in my slide also. There are two exceptions which are there. Loan against so term like policy and all that. If there's an adequate margin which is available, the loan account can be excluded from NTA classification. To extend your question, let's suppose you have taken a loan against term debt and you have taken other housing loan loans. Now if housing loan has defaulted, housing loan has defaulted. Then the exception would apply on loan against some deposit. But if your loan against some deposit has defaulted and adequate margin which is available not to classify that loan as an exception, does not become an exception. Housing loan has to be classified as an exception. So that means let me very clear exception is available for which type of decision. Because many banks try to extend this. He said, Usha, see, by the NPL, even I spoke as an NPL. No, this account has to be classified as an exception. Anybody else? Yes, you have to do. What should be my goal? Two to three points. One, first we need to say that. Because see, uh, you know, you all will agree that the banking is what? The banking is helping the customer when that's the basic principle. But as an auditor, what is my role? As an auditor, my role is that with the, whether this is a one-off instance or this has been done regularly to avoid the account getting classified as an entity. Now, if the one-off instance, like for example, you mentioned that you know, somebody has taken a loan. That there is no business relationship between the two. As an auditor, let me tell you, because I have been trying to prove in many cases. If there is no business relationship, then 100% this accounts amounts to a never be. But if there is a business relationship and this is the only you might look for an option. But if there is no business relationship, that means suddenly this first money has come and he's repaying the loan. And where the disbursement has happened from the bank loan. Then it is nothing but a circular asset. We have just taken the money to, you know, take a give the loan to another party. And I would be less stricter. No business relationship, and if I continue on some kind of treatment, I would call it as a probable error. But I would tell you all also one thing. Once you have decided, and this I'm telling you very frankly and very openly. Once you have decided to classify account as an MPA, then classify the name. Whether DGM is calling you, whether AGM is calling you, or whether GM is calling you. 
the feedback which goes in the market by the bankers is that okay the auditor has uh, identified some account i will come and discuss and we will resolve it once you have decided because we do so much working to identify account to be classified as and at the end we drop it and this time yesterday i was there in the panel discussion for center of audit quality which i was there i told them that why don't we okay last year i understand the circular on UPIN came on 12th april by that time most of the branches were signed off why don't we come out with a UPIN? because now as a branch auditor you require to put the number of MOC and the quantum of MOC also just come out we come out with such a beautiful report on UPIN and give the statistics how many MOCs were passed by the branch auditor Link to the island or each river. This will change the culture, and this 70, 80, and all will go away. So once you have decided, then classify that account. As I said, you have to look at the instance of the case. So many a time there could be genuine business difficulty. By the way, if this logic would have been given, all COVID restructuring should have been taken up. Because this was done only to help the customers to move right. In that business or ECL disability for that. Anybody else had anything? I think that the FAQ is very clear that as an assignment is small, only one. My request to all of you one more thing since we brought the concept of certificate. There has been a too much, you know, issues from the institute side that the chartered accountants are not issued certificate in the format required because all these are pre-certified forms, right? My sincere suggestion and we have been following wherever we get the certificate is that take a certificate, a kind of certificate which is there in the institute guidance, normal certificate, auditor responsibility, management responsibility. and all these certificates <laughs> should be just an answer to that. What will, it, what it will save? It will save taking the onerous responsibility on interest subvention, on education subsidies, so on and so forth. Because you are not going to send and verify hundreds of loan accounts. And in the certificate, there is no way you can write that you have done on test changes. Because it's a pre-specified format. And I and I will do on test changes because I can check 100% of those things. So please take that covering data or covering certificate, attach the certificate as a part of that uh, main certificate because you will remain one. You will not change for certificate. And try to write it that please make the certificate in transition to our main certificate. Because the person who is reading the certificate should know that the auditor has done on test Many, many, many were caught because they had given the interest, so they were doing invisible time. And it could happen to our Sivanaka scheme. Otherwise, it, could happen, it can happen in those cases also. How much we will make? So, please, my sincere request is that try to go through that main certificate and please start implementing it. Anyone the central central auditors will ask a report that please give the number of emotions of at the central office then. Right. So they will also be very careful because I think not to drop any emotion like this. I have to give a just like so I think the central auditor and this was uh, the RBI was aware, and that's why they had sensitized the auditor by asking in this way. That because if I have to give an emotion which I have dropped, I have to give the reason for dropping it. I can't just rely on the reason because. There is no difference between, between the central side auditor and the secondary branch auditor. Only the roles and responsibility differs. It's not a seniority or authority or kind of thing. Only the roles and responsibility differs from both auditors. So if one person has classified the NPA reading the same highlight norm, 
how can you remove that amount of NPA by making the same item? So it will not happen. If it was happening, it will not happen. Thank you. Yeah, you have in case. Yes, yes, yes. One is the uh, audit firm who are into pooling period. Say, for example, in 24. And here, the number has to give you last three years. Uh, so, will the it be? Can be no, no, I will repeat the other times. Other times. And the uh, peer viewer will not be restricted to the previous time for it. No, no, no. Here, it's a ticket on the form. It has nothing to do with it. Right? It will review your other file. What I meant to say that. If the, you are an auditor of the current year and the peer review certificate is coming, then this file will get written. If you are not getting, then other files will be written. I mean, if you are not doing a brand, other files will get written of your form. Anyone else? Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, I would like to propose a very hearty word of thanks to uh, today's speaker, C. A. Pankaj Tiwari. You have seen that he was on his foot throughout and he's kept all the audience on us also on their feet. Thank you, sir, for your very interactive session, very informative. And I uh, really think that all of us present here have gained uh, immense knowledge out of his uh, deliberations today. I would like to thank the today's coordinators. I would sincerely want to thank all of you who have uh, been here, interacted with the uh, speaker, make it more interesting and informative for all. Thank you. I have a few announcements just before we break. Uh, as I announced earlier, on first, there's one more session on bank audit. That is the Excel tools. I would uh, like you all to take benefit of it. Also, we are proposing to have our AGM on the 9th of April. The final dates and the final agenda and everything will be circulated once it is finalized. We are uh, planning to have a session on RERA. Uh, it's like a panel discussion of, from GST as well as in, in uh, direct tax point of view. right? So uh, would like you all to please be present here. Also inform your friends and other colleagues to be present here. Also, as you are aware, a new team has been elected at the WIRC level, the new chairman and the new team. We are inviting them also to facilitate, uh, sorry, not facilitate, sorry, felicitate them. And uh, you can interact with them. It's a very good opportunity. So request you all to be present along with your other friends and colleagues. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Nine, what you're planning?